Hello everybody, how are you? I'm Chef Rob. Uh, thank you to the Mastic Marichas Public Library for having me. Debbie, hello. Uh, going to make some warm food tonight, some comfort food. Pot roast. Uh, it's got herbs and vegetables in it. It's really, really good. And then we're going to make a dessert. Chocolate snowstorm cookies. You have to make them, please. Make them over the holidays. You, you know you're going to be baking, so why not? So everybody, my wife Jackie is here filming tonight, so thank you uh, for watching me, and please send her the questions, and send her all the comments, the questions, and I, I don't have to answer anything. No, I will answer anything you've got for me. So we're going we're gonna to do the pot roast first, of course, you got to eat your main dish before you get dessert, right? Nope. So, no, oh, <laughs> okay. Emily says hello, she says... Um, want to make some venison pot roast. Very good. Elaine says hello. And Emily said hi, Jackie. Hi, Emily. And everybody, before I start, I have to show you this picture here. I got this from Diane at the Mastic Merchants Library in 2017. She painted this for me. Isn't this so wonderful? I loved it. And now I'm using it as my screen for the holidays. So, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> so, and thank you, Susan. She just wished Chris luck with his studies. We wish him luck, too. <laughs> 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 so, thank you, Susan. All right, everybody. What I want to do is take about one and three-quarter pounds to two, two pounds of chuck roast. Okay. And I'm just going to trim it up. In the meantime... I am just going to put a little bit of olive oil in here. Okay. Move this over here. I'm just going to turn this on low. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to take this hot roast. I want to trim this. I want to get this fat off of it. If you left a little bit of the fat on here, uh, fat flavors it, of course. But we're trying to be healthy, so I'm just carving this off here, trimming it, that right there. And then I am going to take some kosher salt, some black pepper, and I am going to coat this all over this roast. Now, I don't know if the library told you, but this takes three hours, so it's like taking that uh, five-hour driving course, but we'll do it in three hours. So you should be out of here by, you know, nine, ten o'clock. Ten o'clock, okay? I'm only kidding. You won't see the end, but you'll see how to exactly make a really good pot roast. <clears throat> so a little bit fresh ground black pepper. And I'm going to put a little bit on the cutting board because that way I can kind of just roll it in here and get pepper all over it, okay? And then I'm going to take some kosher salt. I want to sprinkle that all over this beautiful piece of meat. You want to let this cook for about three hours simmering with all the herbs and vegetables. Uh, we're going to cover it. And then you just want to kind of braise it, you know, ladle some of the juices on it about every half hour. Okay. So if anybody was watching earlier, we were at the Bigelow Public Library in Massachusetts. We just got in the door, just got in. It was a quick trip though, right? <laughs> so uh, love doing it. We did a tomato basil rice soup. We did a turkey panini there. And then we also did spaghetti muffins. Okay. I know you guys have the spaghetti muffin uh, video up. You had that probably back in the spring. I'm just waiting for this olive oil to heat up really good. I'm going to slide this over and get another cutting board in here because I don't want to have my vegetables with raw meat. So you want to always be cautious that way. Okay. Slide this over here. So I'm using, you can use up to eight carrots. These are pretty large carrots. These are what's called chef carrots. And uh, you can see they're pretty huge. Okay. So... Cut them as large or as small as you want because three hours of cooking, no matter what size you cut it, it will be cooked, okay? If you drop this whole thing in there, it's going to be cooked in three hours. What I want to do is get this oil nice and hot so I can sear the meat 
and get a nice crust, top, bottom, sides, everything, okay? So we'll prep our vegetables, and Jackie says we have a question. Susan Goldfine said, made the scallion pancakes, OMG, so good. The scallion pancakes? Yeah. Hello, Susan, how are you? Thank you so much, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to cut up the carrots. I'm going to add some celery. Yeah, those scallion pancakes, they're, they're easy to make and they have so much flavor. And did you, Susan, did you make it with the turkey and the uh, cranberry hoisin sauce? Just wondering that way. We're going to use some rosemary, some fresh thyme in this. Try to use the fresh herbs. Whenever you can find those skinny little packs, just like this, they're 99 cents. Some of the stores have them. Some of them have the bigger pack that are $1.99, but usually you only need a little bit. So find out the stores that carry the little ones, and it's a dollar less. Okay. All right, this oil is getting nice and hot, so let's get this meat sizzling. Okay. All right, so we're going to get a nice crust on every side of it. And then we're going to add all our different things to it. Uh, I'm going to, I got a quart of water. I am going to add in some of this. It's the Better Than Bouillon Beef Base. You can make your own or you can just buy the box one. What is really good about this is you are able to control how much sodium you want. The more of this that you put in, the more flavor it is. Okay. Uh, this will last quite a long time, but always keep it refrigerated. Okay. Yes. Susan Goldstein said she made it with thick cut boar's head turkey. It was the first time having poison sauce. Oh, very, thank you. Just wondering how you did it. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, just going to chop these carrots here. I like it nice and hearty in the pot roast. Nice big chunks of it. I'm going to put in two red onions, and then I'm just going to split them in half and just leave them whole in there. Okay. And we just keep an eye on this, you know. It goes pretty quick when you have it on a high temperature. Look at that. Okay. Just turn it over. Get a nice crust right there. I am going to take the celery, and I'm just going to give this a rough chop as well. This way I have all my veggies all prepped, and then everything goes in there, and we let it simmer for three hours. Always wash that celery, any produce, wash. Wash, wash, wash. Take the red onion, just take these little ends off right here. Just make sure it is very firm. Okay, all the way around, has nice shininess to it, very solid, means it's fresh. On Saturday, I am doing a holiday cookie workshop. If you go to my Facebook page, Simply Creative Chef Rob, at 12 noon, we're going to do three different holiday cookies. You can make them along with me, or just watch. And we're going to leave it up for the, for the month, okay? We're going to make cocoa oatmeal cookies. Bakery style sugar cookies and chocolate walnut raisin cookies. Dana says yummy. Who said that? Dana. Dana. And she said my mom's a vegan. LOL. Okay. Dana, where are you from? I'm wondering if it's the Dana that I know. Okay, it's probably time to turn this here. Let's take a look at it. See that? So it goes pretty quick, but it does the trick. Okay. So I have my onions, I have my carrots, I have my celery already cut. I'm using some criminy mushrooms. The criminy mushrooms give it a nice creaminess to it. I like criminy mushrooms. I want to take the ends off of the mushrooms. So I am just going to trim this little part right here off of all of them, okay? 
and then I'm just going to split it in half. If you want them to leave these whole, you certainly could, because they will be fully cooked. Now, the, there's a saying with mushrooms, always make sure with mushrooms that you, wa you don't wash them, you just give them a, a shower. Giving them a shower, uh, make sure that the water doesn't absorb into the mushroom, okay? Time to check this pot roast. There we go, we're almost there. Two sides to go, yes. Dana said we're from Mastic Beach. Mastic Beach, okay. She's watching with her son, he's the one who said yummy, and Dane is the one who's the vegan. Okay, all right. So, I hope you, you, you make a lot of my dishes, because I have a lot of dishes that uh, are, are vegan, and I have a lot that, uh, mm. of course, are, are meat. Okay, I am just going to move these mushrooms up here a little bit. I'll start taking the ends off of here. And again, anybody has any questions, just let me know. Cut this off. Just put them right on top here. Again, the criminy mushrooms, they, they will hold up really well in this. They give it a little bit more of a creamy texture than the white mushrooms. So I really prefer them in this uh, a lot better. Now tomorrow, for anybody that is a dessert lover, at 7 o'clock I am doing a crustless apple crumb pie at the West Nyack Public Library. And I'm bake doing bakery style sugar cookies. So uh, I hope you'll join us for that. And let's see. It looks... It looks pretty good just like that. So uh, this is the side I had to get. I knew there was one more side. <laughs> I'm just going to lower this just a little. I don't want my smoke alarm to go off. Neither do I. Right? You guys don't want to hear air, 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 air. Okay. Uh, yes. Eileen said, what did he say about the bouillon? Didn't quite catch it and don't see it on the recipe. Okay. Uh, it is beef base. Okay. And it is one uh, quart of, of uh, beef bouillon. You can make your own, and I made it with this here, the beef base. It is one tablespoon per quart of water. You taste it for flavor, and you can see if you want any more in it, okay? So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna add in this beef bouillon. How's that for some steam? <laughs> so you'll get a little bit of the base at the bottom, okay? Just make sure you get that all in there, okay? Emily said it's so good, the crustless apple. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Emily. And I agree. I just love those crumbs on top. It's my favorite. I am going to add in some of the red uh, onions here. And then I'm going to add in the vegetables as well. And we want to add in the tomatoes. So I am using diced up tomatoes. About one cup would be good. Okay, I just want to make sure all these vegetables kind of get down in there. I'm going to turn this little burner on here. I'm going to put in a little bit of fresh garlic. So I'm just going to kind of smash this garlic up. About two to three cloves. These are small, so I'm adding actually four of them because they're so small. And then just kind of give them a nice rough chop. And this will give it a lot of flavor, especially after three hours of just simmering. You could do this in the crock pot as well, and the crock pot uh, would be great for this. Okay. And yes, Jackie? Elaine said, thanks for all your classes, Chef Rob. It's my honor to learn from you. Uh, Elaine, thank you so much. Thank you. And, and it's my pleasure to do these. I'm very fortunate during these times 
to be cooking for so many wonderful libraries, meeting so many different people now across the country in that. So it's been really, really great. I am going to add the mushrooms, the rest of the mushrooms in here now. Up to about a one, one cup of the mushrooms is probably fine for this here. I actually have a class coming up in January. I'm doing a chicken schnitzel class. So uh, you, you'll love that one. That one has, that's one of my favorites. It's chicken schnitzel. It has a sour cream mushroom sauce. We just did that one as a YouTube video. So you should see that one towards the March area, but I will do some live ones. And we'll probably do it for Mastic, Shirley. I'll do that for Debbie. You know Debbie will want me to do that one. We always try to do different things that we haven't done before. Okay, so I am just going to put a lid on this pot roast right here. Every half hour, we're just going to kind of ladle a little, little bit more on there. I am just going to put just a little bit more water in there. So that way it's kind of covering the whole pot roast. See, it wasn't going too long, right? It's always good to have a kitchen right behind you. Right to the side of you. Emily wants to know, how about potatoes? Potatoes would be great in here as well, too. Yep. Uh... Some of the red potatoes in here I think would be fantastic. But trying to eat a little less starch. So when I did this one, I said I'm not putting any potatoes. Just fed, fresh vegetables. Still have to put some fresh rosemary. The rosemary, I'm putting two sprigs in there. Okay, you just drop them in there. And that will throw off a lot of flavor. And then some fresh thyme. Just about four sprigs of the fresh thyme. And then you could just take this out at the very end because you want to be careful that you're not eating. It's getting you know, the little woody part of it. And then I want to drop two bay leaves in there. Now, I don't know about you, but I always like my sauce, my pot roast, to have a little coating. You know, like I don't like it thin. Almost like if you could picture a Manhattan clam chowder to a New England clam chowder. The New England clam chowder, if you kind of dip your spoon in there, the white creaminess just kind of sticks to it. I like this to have a nice little uh, sauce to it. So I'm going to show everybody how to thicken it up if you like it that way. Okay. If you don't, when this is done, you just slice this meat, pour those vegetables right on top, and all the pan juices right on top. It's delicious just like that. But if you like it to coat the spoon and have it a little more hearty, you can watch what I'm going to do now. So this is, let's just say this is the juices that we would have in here, okay, uh, later on. You would need to have that boiling. And when you have that boiling, You're just going to take a little bit of flour, okay, and you're going to add half amount. If I put in a quarter cup of flour, you want to add a quarter cup of water to it as well. Always put a pinch of salt in there because what that'll do is make it where it's not going to have any lumps in it, okay. So I'm going to get a quarter cup of water for this here. This needs to come to a boil for it to work. So I'm just going to give that a second to boil. We'll just get some water. Susan said she just bought fresh rosemary so she could make your bread. She watched the YouTube video on Sunday. Was that the rustic Parmesan rosemary bread, Susan? I think that's what it was. And then everybody, if you just watch, this has the salt. It has a quarter cup of flour and now a quarter cup 
of water and this is called a roux but normally a roux is made with melted butter and not water but if you're trying to cut calories and it's not going to add a whole lot of taste the butter you're going to cut the calories it's going to work out better this way okay so this is a thickening agent if you can see into this pot here it is getting ready to boil as soon as that comes to a rapid boil I will slowly drizzle this in until it thickens and that is what I would do to this sauce when it's finished I would take the pot roast out put it on a platter all the vegetables and the sauce that is still in there I'd bring it to a boil and I would slowly add this into it and it will get nice and thick you might not need to use it all so slowly put it in until you see the consistency that you would like okay if you could see this is boiling right now just gradually add that in there and I can see that it's getting thicker and thicker I find the one quarter cup flour and one quarter cup of uh, water is perfect okay so what was like a thin juice before you could see it's like a nice gravy right now okay if you do this over some egg noodles or something like that it'd be really perfect Susan said yes about the bread. And did you make it, Susan, already? I'm wondering how, how yours came out. She said um, she just bought the rosemary. Oh, okay. So she could make the bread. Got it. I remember uh, that one. That was really good. You're going to enjoy that, Susan. Now, Susan, a tip on that bread. It, it, you, I know you saw the recipe. I know you probably you saw the video already. And it's a high temperature first and then a lower temperature. The high temperature gives it that nice crustiness. And then when you reduce it down, uh, it already has the crustiness, doesn't need any more. Then you slowly bake it. Okay. But yeah, that, that's really good. That should be at a lot of libraries uh, in, more in January, I would say. And I am thinking you saw that in Mattatuck. Am I right, Susan? I think you might be. Yes. Another question? Yes, B said, would the recipe be online to cook at a later date? Uh, which one? Um, these here? Because if you're talking about these here, I believe they would be on the Mastic uh, Mauritius Library right now. Because they're always so good. They always have them on there. If they're not on there, they will put them up there. Okay, I do know they have the recipes. Okay. So while this is simmering... And I'm going to baste it every three, uh, 30 minutes or so for three hours. And I always want to make sure that that meat is down below. Okay. Nice and look at all that. This is going to be so good. We did a lamb stew the other day, an Irish lamb stew the other day, uh, Chris and I, my son. And we were filming for St. Patrick's Day. So it's an Irish lamb stew. And that was really, really good. We were doing a video like 10, 10, 30 at night. That was the latest one I ever did. Okay. So let's make some snowstorm cookies while this is cooking. And then we'll peek into it every once in a while. Okay. So you can see it. With the pot roast, what you want it to do, you want that meat to break down. And it just kind of basically falls apart, just like a corned beef, like corned beef and cabbage on St. Patrick's Day, just like that. So I am going to get rid of this little burner so it's not in my way. Okay. So these are called winter snowstorm cookies. I'll show you some that I made earlier, what they look like, and how to finish them off. Now, you're probably saying, what is the snowstorm all about? Okay, you take a shaker just like this, powdered sugar, and you put them right over the chocolate cookies after they have cooled. Okay, that is the snowstorm. See, that's the kind of snowstorm we like, right? Powdered sugar on a chocolate cookie. Let's do our dry ingredients first. The dry ingredients, I am going to take one full cup 
of the all-purpose flour and two tablespoons of the all-purpose flour as well. I'm gonna move that over to the side. I want a half teaspoon of baking soda. Make sure that it is nice and level. Okay, sprinkle that in there. I want a half teaspoon of salt. And what the salt's gonna do is make that vanilla, make the chocolate chips, make the walnuts, uh, the cocoa powder, make that all stand out really, really good. So just take your dry ingredients, whisk them around just like this, and just leave them on the side. Susan said the recipe was from, or the video she watched was from Kamsawag. From Kamsawag, okay, all right, got it. Thank you, Susan. And Emily S., she said, Chef Rob, I just want to let you know that I made your M&M cookies over the weekend with a friend of hers. The cookies came out so yum. Oh, that's great. And that one, what's really good about it, is you can add almost as many M&Ms as you want, <laughs> okay? Even after they come out of the oven and they're still soft, you could still kind of press some still in there because sometimes they get a little lost in the batter. Okay, so now I want to take the butter and then I want to mix up all of the other ingredients in here. So I'm going to take one stick of room temperature butter. Always, when it says room temperature, make sure it is nice and soft. So you should be able to kind of put your thumb into it just like that. You don't want melted butter and you don't want it to be cold. Okay. Okay. A half cup of the white sugar. Nice and level. A half cup of the packed brown sugar. I use the light brown sugar. I like the light brown sugar. In this recipe, I typically use it almost in everything, but I really like it in this because I don't want it to have too much of a molasses flavoring to it, okay? So I'm gonna take the sugars and the butter, mix this all together. You can take an electric beater and mix this, but that this way I can still talk to you too at the same time. So when you are doing, putting nuts into any of your baked goods, always toast them, okay? You could take a little saute pan and kind of flip them a few times, get them a little toasty. If you ever tasted them from a bag to when they come out of the oven or in a pan, they're so much better. You'll never eat them out of the bag again, okay? I'm gonna add in one egg in a minute. I just want to make sure all of this is mixed really well. I just want it to look like one color. I want it to be creamed really well. Uh, this Saturday night, af after we do our cookie, our holiday cookie event, which I'm really, really excited about it because we have so many libraries that are doing it. Um, so it's going to be fun. Uh, I think the comments and the, and the, and the questions are just going to be like keep coming and coming because we have so many libraries doing it. But we're going to be doing that January, February, March, April, and May. And then we're just going to continue with that. Even if things do ever get back to normal, we're going to always do some virtual. Okay. So if you can see the way the batter looks, it should look just like that. One consistency. I'm just going to crack in an egg, one large egg. Gonna put in a half tablespoon of vanilla extract. So you get these kind of odd ones, you get them online, you know, where the exact measurement. I have the one and three quarter cup one. They're really good to have. Okay, some cocoa powder. The cocoa powder, a quarter cup of it. Just dump that right in there. You know, cocoa can get everywhere. If I was to drop this, this would be all over my home. So I am not going to drop it. Because my wife is right in front of me and she will let me have it. <laughs> no, she never lets me have it. She's, she's so good. Emily wants to know, um, how about almond nuts? She knows you said um, walnuts and pecans. 
Yeah, almond, yeah, almonds would be fine in there. Yep. If I had a preference, I, I would go with the walnuts and pecans before that. But that's, of course, my taste, too. So I am just going to mix this until it is one consistency. I don't want any cocoa powder to be on the side of the bowl. Again, you could take an electric mixer, mix this, but then I can't talk to you. And then you just kind of tap it against the bowl here. Okay. That is all mixed. Let's add in our dry ingredients into the wet. And we're just going to mix it until it is combined. Now these are going to bake in a 375 oven for 10 minutes. You should get about 18 cookies, okay? And they're a nice size cookie. And boy, do you taste chocolate in these. Between the cocoa and the sesame uh, chocolate chips. And if you don't like the nuts, you don't have to add them. If you wanted to add something like a raisins to a batter like this, uh, you certainly could. But don't add too many raisins because raisins will absorb the moisture. So be cautious. A quarter cup of raisins would be enough for this batter. Okay. So let's just get this all mixed together. And tomorrow night at 5.30 at the Bayport Blue Point Library on Facebook, we are doing scallion and dill salmon sliders. And then we're doing, this is the only library I'm doing this one. It's called the Ultimate Chocolate Peanut Butter Pie. So you will love that one. Uh, it has a lot of flavor. If you like Reese's, you want to make that one. I know you can't make them all, can you? But I've been making them all, so you can make them all. I just, in between the, I did a class at 4.30 today for the Bigelow Public Library. And then I had this one at 7 o'clock. So in between it, I went and I put a cup of soup and uh, some of these chocolate uh, snowstorm cookies on a neighbor's fence and called her and just said, go outside. There's a little something out there. What did Mr. Rogers say? Won't you be my neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't somebody say that one day? It was somebody from the Bayport Blue Point. I have to mention that tomorrow. They said I was the Mr. Rogers of cooking. Oh. Right? Didn't <laughs> they? When we first started the virtual or something like that? I don't remember. I don't know. Okay. So this dough is all combined. I'm going to add in the nuts. So I'm going to add in a half cups. And again, this is optional. Add them in here. And then chocolate chips. I want to add three quarters of a cup. So these here are quarter cups. So three of these. Two and three. Susan said, your neighbors must love you. <laughs> but they got to be good to me. Otherwise, they only hear about it. <laughs> no, we're very lucky. We have great neighbors. We do. We do. Okay, so I'm just going to go in with this dough. Look at how loaded this is. This is a truly loaded cookie dough. If you have the time, it is well worth it to take this dough and put it in the refrigerator for at least 45 minutes to an hour, and you can actually put it in the refrigerator up to four days, okay? Because you want to bring that um, dough to, like, uh, to get that butter cold, okay? So it's really important to get it cold. So I'm just going to roll the size that I would make, okay? I'm going to use a sheet pan with the silicone baking mats. Always use them or the parchment paper. Okay, look at that. I want to get one mat free. Okay. So you want about a tablespoon and a half, okay? So you can kind of ballpark it if you feel like you're, you're okay with it. And you can make these ahead of time. And then what I do is before I 
kind of put it on the pan. I just kind of pat it down so it almost kind of gives it its start to start coming out like that. So we could just roll these. Okay. I do want to check on that pot roast. Not that we're at 30 minutes, but it never hurts to go over and braise it just a little bit. Emily wants to know if you could freeze the dough. The dough, it doesn't really uh, come out good that way. You're better off making them and then freezing the cookies because when you take the cookies out of the freezer, if you just put them in the microwave for like six, seven seconds and loosen it up, you, it tastes just like you made the cookie. Okay. Okay. So this is where we are with the pot roast. Look at that. And now this is going to reduce down and of course get thicker, but it won't be as thick as this here so that is where don't forget if you want it thicker a little flour and, and uh, water mix it together and just add it at the very end when it's boiling if you add it when it's not boiling it's not going to work for you okay so i just want to give everybody some libraries that we are going to be doing while i roll some of this dough here okay on Thursday at the Emma Clark Public Library on the Zoom. I'm doing Hungarian chicken with uh, dumplings. We learned that recipe from a chef in Hungary back in around Labor Day. So um, we are bringing that now to the libraries. I know a few of you have seen it and actually made it. Uh, Susan, I think you probably mastered those dumplings by now. Unless you didn't make it again since then, so I'm not sure. But that is on Zoom on, at Emma Clark on Thursday. And then on Friday at 2 o'clock on Facebook, the Elwood Public Library, I am doing balsamic roasted red peppers with ciabatta bread, war fresh mozzarella, basil, red onion. And uh, that is a great appetizer for the holidays. And I'm doing roasted shrimp with a ginger sco soy scallion sauce. That, if you like shrimp cocktail and you say, I'm tired of cocktail sauce, if you make that sauce, you probably won't have cocktail sauce for a long time, okay? Emily so, said it's yummy because I made it two times already. Which one? The uh, scallion? The scallion sauce? She didn't say. Okay. She, I think the comment came before you talked about the scallion sauce, so okay. I'm thinking maybe... The Hungarian dish. Okay, I can see that. Yep, I think Emily made that a couple times. Yes, she did say it. Um, Daniel, Dana's son, um, has a question. As a chef, do you make up the recipe or do you follow a recipe? Uh, no, I, I like to make it up, but they, like we could be like on a cruise, you know, years ago. You know how the olden days we used to be able to go on a cruise or something? You could be having a meal and you'd be like, this tastes great. And you go home and you play with it and you're kind of like, how can I make this the way it is that I like it? Or this is what I would do to it. This is how I would change it. So you learn many different recipes. Some of the recipes, I just learned some recipes from uh, uh, Giada because I did a virtual cooking class with Giada. Uh, did one with Valerie Bertinelli. And then also, uh, let's see, uh, in Italy... Hungary, Turkey. We did Turkish bread in, in Turkey. I have to do that one. Everybody loved those. It was big sesame Turkish bread. Yeah, that was good. They was oh, right out of the oven. Yeah, that was so good. Emily was referring to the dumplings. Okay, I thought so. And Susan said she hasn't had a chance to make it again, but she will definitely make it over the holidays. Susan, I know why you haven't had a chance, because you've been watching me too much. <laughs> I was actually at the Mastic Marich's library last night around 6.30. Yeah, I was dropping something off there for the children's department. So it was good to be there. Debbie, you weren't there. Where were you? Okay, so these are just about all rolled up. Uh, I'm going to check the pot roast again. These... I'm going to put these these already into the refrigerator for about 45 minutes to an hour. And 
then I'm probably going to freeze them. Can't eat any more cookies. I know, we can always eat cookies. But you see, if you put them in the refrigerator like this, they'll get solid quicker, and then you don't have to dig at the dough or claw at the dough. If you just put the dough into the refrigerator, take it out about 20 to 30 minutes ahead of time, because it's going to be solid. And that way it just softens up just a little bit, and then you can make them the size you want, okay? So I want to show you some finished cookies. I'm just going to go over here and take a look at this. I actually want to reduce this down a little bit because you want it to simmer. This house is going to smell good for three more hours. Yes, it will. Okay, so this here is the way the chocolate snowstorm cookies will look like, okay? So it's a nice size. Well, that one fell apart. Okay. That's because they're so soft. They are soft, yes. They're good. And now, here's the snowstorm. The tastiest snowstorm there is. And they're really, really good. Yes, Jackie? Susan said she can never watch too much of you. Work Thanks. is very stressful lately, exhausted when she gets home. Aw. Well... I hope some of these programs bring some joy, some, uh, you know, get us away from the TV and, you know, just something we, we connect, you know, we have fun with each other, you know, you guys joke with me, I joke with you, okay, um, I miss seeing everybody in person, you know, uh, always so nice, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's been, it's been, you know, really wonderful for nine years working in all the public libraries. And I think I've been at the Mastic Merchants for eight now. Wow. Yes, Jackie, question? Eileen wants to know if all cookies can be frozen. Uh, basically, yeah. I would say some freeze better than others. Uh, but these cookies, if you had them in the freezer for a couple months, you'd, probably, you'd be fine. And just bring them to room temperature and put them in the microwave for a few seconds just to kind of loosen it up. And it'll taste like it was fresh baked. One time I did a class, uh, not a class, I'm sorry, uh, I was doing a personal, I was a personal chef uh, over in Kutchog, and the lady that I worked for, she had a garden tour, and she used to have buses actually come there, people, the gardens were just beautiful, and I would make cookies, and I would make a bunch of these different type cookies, that the ones that I'm making now, and a few other ones, and... One day, who came along but Martha Stewart? And when Martha Stewart came there and was looking around the gardens, I saw her take one of the cookies, you know, off of the tray, which was fine. That's what they were there for. But I said, I, I got to see if I pass the Martha test. And she actually, I didn't know if she was going to finish it or she'd fling it in the bush, you know. So uh, she actually came back for another one. So I was, I was like, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so uh, that was, that was nice. Uh, I used to make over 300 cookies for her garden tours and her husband, which, you know, I loved working with him. He, he was wonderful and we were able to always joke around and he actually told his wife one day, he says, I think they come for the cookies and then just kind of wander around the, uh, look at your flowers while she, she wasn't crazy about that comment, but, uh, you know, we just, you know, it was all about fun, you know, just having fun together. So, yes, um, any other questions? Emily said, I love making them. I think she was talking about the cookies, but I'm not positive. Okay. So, everybody, the Mastic Merchants Library, I want to thank you so much. Debbie, thank you for all these years. Uh, you people that watch me day in, day out. Uh, I keep, I gotta keep thinking of new things for you guys because I want it to always be nice and fresh and exciting. And I hope you're all going to bake along with me this Saturday. Uh, cause this Saturday, three different cookies and we're going to leave them up there, but we're starting at 12 noon. So if you want to bake along or you just want to bake one of them, but please watch it and go to my Facebook page, Simply Creative Chef Rob. And, uh, any last questions before we go, Jackie? No, nothing. No. All right. Oh, actually, Emily said all his recipes. Oh, she likes making all of your recipes. Thank you, Emily. Just the cookies. And, and, you know, I know Emily does because she, she tells me. 
she tells me the ones that she says, Rob, never do that ever again. You know, <laughs> she's pulled me aside in classes and she says, never do that now. She, oh, I don't think no. so. Emily's so wonderful now. Uh, <laughs> and I'm she sorry. said good night to both of us. Good, good night. night, Emily. Good night, everybody. And, and yep. Go ahead. And Pat Carroll said, thank you, Rob. Always enjoy your classes. Thank you, Pat. Always a pleasure. Thank you. So everybody stay well. Uh, have great holidays if I don't see you, but I think I'm going to see you. Thank you. Bye-bye.